somehow, some way, there have been enough notable and, dare I say, crash and burn worthy Kyles that have made this unbelievably niche concept actually one of my most exciting videos yet. Because here's the deal. I've talked about many Big Brother curses before, but possibly the most brutal and deadly curse is being a Kyle on Big Brother. Throughout Big Brother history, there have been quite a few Kyles, and to say that they made an impact on their seasons would be a massive understatement. Unfortunately for them though, their impact is typically at the expense of their game and sometimes their reputation. Now, this video will have a bit of Big Brother Canada in it, but due to the nature of how the Kyles did, there's not really going to be any crucial spoilers for those seasons, so you can watch without fear. Plus, you wouldn't want to miss the Big Brother Canada Kyles, because crazily enough, they are just as, if not more, enticing to talk about than our Big Brother 24 Kyle. But if you're only interested in hearing about Kyle from Big Brother 24, you can skip to this point here. And now, without further ado, let's get started. I'm Kyle, I'm from Bountiful, Utah, and I'm an entrepreneur, baby, making dancing videos with my mom, which means I'm unemployed. <laughs> to kick things off, the first Kyle we had ever seen in North American Big Brother is this hulking beast of a player, Kyle Shore from Big Brother Canada 2. Now, just by looking at him combined with the context of this video, you may make the initial assumption that this guy was trouble, potentially even a douchey meathead. But actually, not really, at least on the show. He came off as a pretty chill, laid-back guy, and he showed a huge interest in learning about others' lifestyles and doing so in a way that seemed to come from a genuine desire to learn and accept, as opposed to doing so in order to gain social capital inside the house. Unfortunately for Kyle, he wasn't able to make too many inroads with the large group in the house, and his obvious physical stature made him a threat in the eyes of the others, and he was backdoored in just week two. So unfortunately, I cannot call this a success in Big Brother terms. Off the show, I know he would kind of go on drunken rants on Twitter about Big Brother Canada, but we're just looking at their time inside the house for this list. That side show. Can I say one thing? Okay. I just want to say this whole experience has been amazing. I made so many friends in there that I would oh. never thought you had different cultures. It does not matter about religion. It does not matter about your skin color. It does not matter about your sexuality. We're all flesh and blood, and I'm getting all emotional here. Oh my and God. Let's hear it again for Kyle. Okay, yeah, I hope you enjoyed your one round of chillness because this is where the going gets wild. Heading into the lost season at Big Brother Canada 8, powerlifter Kyle Rosendale was this big muscular guy who was worried that he'd be perceived as a gigantic competition threat when instead he just wanted to come across as the calm, passive family man and just an overall good guy. However, basically, as soon as he walked through the door, he started playing very aggressively, completely erasing any desired perception he had hoped to come into the game with. And although he did end up being in the majority alliance, he came across as far too domineering of a figure and likely was going to be taken out not too far into the game. But the main thing with Kyle is that he was just like weird. He had an obsession with wanting house guest Jamar to say the n-word when he was around him for his own amusement, even though Jamar was clearly not comfortable with saying it inside the house. And this leads into the main main part, the confrontation. During a house meeting, Jamar and Kyle got into an argument in front of everyone, and tensions were pretty high, but the argument itself was not explosive. This is definitely a shorthand recount of what happened for the sake of simplicity, but basically, Kyle was doing a lot of sh** talking to Jamar, and in response to the entire argument at hand, Jamar had made a few threats about when they're outside of the house. And while yeah, it wasn't great, it's not like things of that nature hadn't been said before, and typically would just result in a warning. But that's not what ended up happening. I need to make it clear that from here on out, it is just educated speculation. But the speculation is that after the house meeting, Kyle wouldn't let the threats go and very much kept pushing to production that he and some of the others in the house were uncomfortable with Jamar staying in the house after making the threats. And Big Brother Canada eventually felt that they had no option but to remove Jamar from the game. At the point that the fans were made aware of Jamar's expulsion, they were outraged that Kyle was able to seemingly manipulate the encounter in weaponized production to get his way in the game and have Jamar removed. And there was definitely reason for a lot of people to think that there was racial implications dominating the entire matter, and it had the producers scrambling. So in an attempt to squash the backlash, Big Brother Canada made the decision to eject Kyle from the game as well. All in all, I don't think you need me to spell it out for you that this Kyle was not a success and is deemed a failure. You guys drop it. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> nah. We both Next agree. Time, hey. 
every now and then mm -hmm. when I'm around and he's around, can you just drop one for me? <laughs> Please, Jack. I'm not going to do that, bro. Yeah, muscles don't help you in here. Muscles don't help you outside of here. <laughs> All that weight training just to get... <laughs> Jamar, you can actually you can actually get kicked out of this game for saying that. Hmm? Yeah. Like, you can get kicked out of this game for saying that. I'm not saying that, nothing. Right? Production also witnessed a pattern of problematic behavior from Kyle. And as a result, he has been also removed from the game. Now, before we get to the next Kyle, we need a little bit of a precursor. When the Big Brother Canada 9 cast was released, one of the cast members, Ethan, was discovered to have an extremely problematic past. So late one night before the season aired, BB Can dropped Ethan from the cast and revealed that the player to replace him would be a player named Kyle Moore. But they didn't reveal really anything else about him. The internet raced to find who this player could be, and eventually they found a Kyle Moore who lived in Canada, and he seemed like a fantastic guy. He was funny, charming, and he had a mental health podcast. Everyone thought he was the one and swarmed his social media. But eventually, the internet found a second Kyle Moore who also lived in Canada, but he was a bit more boring than the first Kyle Moore, and nobody knew which Kyle Moore was the actual one. The next morning, Big Brother Canada reveals more information about Kyle, and everyone realizes that it was actually the second Kyle Moore that would be on the show, much to everyone's disappointment. But when Big Brother Canada 9 started, it turned out that this second Kyle Moore was pretty likable, and he had a good head on his shoulders for the game, albeit he was a little bit boring. Part of him being portrayed as boring was likely due to how passive he was in the game, but that's not to say he did nothing. He was in a show match with Austin and was a part of the Oddballs Alliance, but after confronting Kiefer and being a bit demeaning, in an argument with him in week three, Kyle got unlucky that Kiefer won the week four HOH and put himself and his closest ally Rohan on the block. And once Rohan won the veto, Kyle was evicted in week four on day 27. While he wasn't really a bad player, he was out pre-jury and wasn't able to make crazy strides in the game. So I can't really call Kyle Moore a success. You guys want to fill us in? What's going on or what? Big man? What do you mean? I don't know. You told me? Conversation not about game, and it was personal. Like I'm, we're both on the okay, ball together. It's the second week in a row where I'm sitting on a couch and people are getting pulled into rooms. It's uh, Big Brother, yeah. So I'm just, dude. Okay. It's Big Brother, so okay. I'm not allowed Let to ask you. You're so aggressive. How am I aggressive, man? You're yelling at me. I'm yelling at you. I'm not saying names. I'm not throwing anybody. You're not saying names. I'm not saying names. Sir, this oh, is Big Brother, and you're supposed to. Who's hear yelling me. now? If anybody's lying in this game, Kyle, it is you. Tell me how. If anybody's manipulating in this game, it is you. I'm Everybody waiting. Is... Well, now that we've talked about Kyle Moore from Big Brother Canada 9, why don't we talk about Kyle Moore from Big Brother Canada 10? Yep, that is right. Remember when I said that the internet had found two Kyle Moores in the preseason Big Brother Canada 9? Well, the first Kyle Moore that they found that didn't end up being on the show took the whole fiasco really well. He had never watched Big Brother before, but found the whole Kyle Moore situation really funny. He was a really good sport about it all, and he even went on to RHAP and was happy to join the Big Brother community. It seemed that the BB Camp producers also found the whole situation really funny because they figured, hey, what the hell, let's put this Kyle Moore on Big Brother Canada 10. In terms of how someone was cast for the show, this is probably the best path to the house of all time. But how did this Kyle Moore do in the house? Well, starting off, Kyle was in a really, really good spot. He was basically the center figure of his majority alliance. He had close bonds with many outside members. He had a pregame connection to house guest Moose, and he was set up to go really far in the game and had plenty of strong numbers backing him up and wanting to take him to the end. However, everything went to shit once he won HOH in week three. Kyle was hyper fixated on the idea of making a big game move when it was so far and away in his best interest to not make a big move. After an argument in his HOH room, Kyle put up the player he knew outside of the game in Moose alongside one of his most loyal allies, Stephanie. Then he decided to inform everyone in the house of his pregame connection with Moose and exposed his alliance, the Savage Seven. And then after Moose won the veto, Kyle angered the house even more when he nominated Josh as a replacement. To make things even worse for Kyle, Josh didn't even go home. Instead, his loyal ally Stephanie took the hit in a huge blindside to Kyle. And what's really the icing on the cake is that right afterwards, one of Kyle's only allies that he had left in the house, Gino, won the week four HOH, but even so, Gino felt that his public association with Kyle was too detrimental for his own game, and he sent him packing in week four on day 27, the exact same day in placement that the Kyle Moore from Big Brother Canada 9 got, crazily enough. Kyle went from one of the best spots in the house in the first two weeks to having, hands down, one of the worst HOH reigns in any Big Brother ever, and it led to his demise the following week, even when his closest ally won HOH. All in all, it's a failure 
for game reasons, but a huge success for entertainment purposes because watching someone crash and burn like that was so joyous to watch, but not in a mean-spirited way. Uh, it's been pointed out that I look like Kyle Moore from last yes! season. Yes! <laughs> you guys want to guess what my last name is? Moore. Shut up! Oh my God! Yeah, so when the cast was announced last year, people found my social media, thought it was his, and kind of like flooded it, and we're like, you're the guy, I'm big brother, and we found his Instagram, and I was like, no, no, it's no. not me. You have to make that move. Josh, please take a seat. Josh, you are safe. Oh. Stephanie, I'm sorry. You've been evicted from the Big Brother Canada house. Don't hug me. Being put up by G, you know, somebody who was my anchor in this game, my final two, my ride or die. I'd be lying if I said that this all didn't hurt. Gino has made a business decision. This is a game decision. And at the end of the day, I respect him for it. So first of all, I had some time to think. And you, Gino. And now we get to the one and only Kyle in Big Brother US. Kyle Kapaner, Kapaner, you know who I'm talking about from Big Brother 24. Going into the season, many people weren't fans of Kyle. He twerked on TikTok and looked like an obvious recruit and that didn't scream fan favorite to many. But as the weeks went on, he definitely started to grow on the fans. Say what you will, but Kyle was a massive part in shifting the narrative of the game. He was arguably the most important person involved with creating the leftovers, the alliance that brought in the outsiders to take out the initial majority alliance in week three. Outside of the alliance, Kyle was able to bring in information from Alyssa, who was obviously attracted to him, but Kyle wasn't giving in to Alyssa's advances and said that a showmance would be bad for his game, and even though he liked her, he wanted to wait until after the show to begin anything with Alyssa. This screamed excellent gameplay to me, and after three weeks inside the house, my perception of Kyle had done a complete 180, and I was fully aboard the Kyle train. But things take an unfortunate turn for the worse. You see, after Alyssa kept pestering and pushing herself onto Kyle over and over and over again, Kyle finally gave in and became a full-fledged showmance with Alyssa, and it started affecting his game. He started pushing for Alyssa to be safe, he stopped pulling his weight within the leftovers, and he whined when he had to go on the block to send Daniel home, even though every other leftover had been more than okay with doing so themselves, as they had been doing the prior couple weeks with their partners. So, Kyle's position started worsening, but it was still early on and he had time to turn things around. But what comes next is definitely the biggest red flag in the eventual downfall to his game. In the beginning of week five, Kyle began to become suspicious of a potential cookout 2.0 alliance forming or already being formed inside the house. For starters, speculating about a cookout 2.0 is showing a fundamental misunderstanding of the cookout's mission in the first place, which was to crown the show's first black winner. You can't crown the first black winner twice. That's not how things work. So at that point, it shows that you are now just assuming that the black players would come together solely because it's happened once before. That now becomes a very questionable thing to assume. Secondly, if you look at the house dynamics, it should be pretty clear that there is nothing to base a second cookout on outside of just assuming that the black players would work together. Terrence and Taylor were nominated every other week. Amira was already evicted. Jasmine and Terrence had already very visibly shown their disdain towards Taylor. There's just no reason to assume that these players would work together outside of their skin color. And even then, Kyle went a step further and assumed that Joseph and Indy would be included as well, solely because they were minority figures inside the house. At this point, it's a lot more than just having an initial thought. And once Kyle started trying to form an alliance of all the white players in direct opposition of this potential cookout who combined with some other microaggressions that Kyle had begun showing throughout these middle weeks, like calling Monty the villain of the season and labeling some players as aggressive, there's nothing left to justify. The point of this is not to ramble on about Kyle being this awful person, but to instead explain how this type of assumption can be problematic. Assuming a secondary cookout alliance solely based on there being minorities inside the house that maybe get along with one another, it's a huge fundamental misinterpretation of the cookout in general. And whether unconscious or not, it does show a lack of education on the subject matter, it can expose biases in individuals, and it could lead to a serious issue inside the house that will hurt people as we're about to touch upon. 
So anyways, Kyle had approached Michael about this idea, but he of course declined and decided to hold on to this information for a while. When the house split in week seven, Kyle fully turned on the leftovers, evicted Joseph, and aligned with the players in Direfest with the hopes of backdooring Michael once the house became one again. But this is where things bite Kyle in the ass, because Michael correctly suspects what's going on, goes out and wins the veto, and then exposes everything Kyle had talked about with forming an anti-cookout alliance to everyone in the house, completely shattering Kyle's position. Before Michael exposed this, Kyle had managed to put himself into a really good position once more, but with this information exposed, Kyle's entire game crumbled. Everyone turned on him, including Alyssa, and he had nowhere left to go. Michael, of course, went on to save Brittany, and Kyle was then successfully backdoored in eighth place. Realistically, Kyle could have had it all, but he even admitted himself that he let his racial biases affect his thought process and it ended up being the downfall to his game. While it does seem like he is genuinely sorry for what he's done, it doesn't excuse his wrongdoings and he needs to be held very accountable for said things and he will be facing the repercussions for his actions, both inside and outside of the game. I do hope that Kyle can take the time to recognize the effect that this had on the players inside the house and to educate himself on the struggles and reality that black people face every single day and come out of this a changed and more informed individual. As of now, the ball is in his court and how he proceeds from here on out will be very telling on whether or not his sincerity is genuine or just an attempt to save face. To summarize though, when looking at whether or not Kyle's game was a success or a failure, it should be obvious. Game-wise, he showed to be a very capable and dangerous player and oftentimes made the correct moves in order to better his position. But he overplayed his hand, thought way too much, made many mistakes, things got very messy, and overall I have to call it a failure. And I can't get over the fact that Joseph, Monty, and Taylor have extremely strong connections with Indy, Terrence, and Jasmine. I mean, it looks very similar to the cookout. Oh, oh listen, this is like bigger than game. This is like more room. You brought it back to the cookout. Uh, yes, you did, Kyle. No. Yes, you did. I'm just, I'll just tell you right now, if that ends up being the side, it's like, I can't, I, I can't do that. Oh, it's just such a fine line after last season. We just can't assume that that would be no. the case, though, no. you know what I mean? You made me pull the trigger, and this man the whole time was telling me the absolute truth. It should have been you who left, not Joseph. You guys know I'm kind of a naive person. I've been living in a bubble. I've never been to a bar. Like, I don't have these life experiences. I don't, I have these unconscious biases, which I do acknowledge now. I just, I want you to understand that I can love you and accept you as a person, but we can also hold you accountable for unconscious things that yeah. have, have happened. And there we go. Out of the four Kyles in Big Brother Canada, none of them have been able to make it to the jury stage of the game, and the only North American Kyle to make a solid run at things was Kyle in Big Brother 24. Now, I know there is likely going to be some disagreement with what I said about Kyle in Big Brother 24, and I please urge you to have a conversation with me about it in the comments. I'm definitely not going to sit here and say that my viewpoint is the correct viewpoint. It's just my initial reaction and breakdown of what happened, but the events are still very fresh, and hearing different justifications from different viewpoints and perspectives could help us all out. I don't know. That's just my two cents. At the end of the day, this is just a silly video about Kyle's on a show that we all enjoy watching, but it has the opportunity to help us become more educated on very serious topics that affect so many people, not just in Big Brother, but in real life. Okay, time to bring it all back home. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, consider subscribing. As always, I need to give that extra special shout out to all of my YouTube members who, as far as I'm aware, are not named Kyle. So luckily for them, they may still have a chance if they ever play Big Brother. And as always, here's a clip for you on your way out. Welcome.